Ready to trade rockets. Here it is time for the great one, the YouTube People's Champ. To do another reaction. J-Rock has been seeing this video fly all over the internet about this woman who is apparently too good for the Cheesecake Factory. Well, J-Rock has come across a video where an interview was done with these two to try to figure out exactly what really happened. Hi, Hi J-Rock has come back to you too. What is happening in in, in in with the millions and millions of J-Rock fans from all over the world? That's right, baby. J-Rock is here, man. We're about to check out this video. J-Rock came across this channel. Uh, came across this channel. Kevin Wesley, the Truth Factory. <coughs> Excuse me. J-Rock has been seeing this video flying all over the internet. Apparently, these two went on a date. Um, this gentleman took her, this, this lady, to the Cheesecake Factory and she just basically said she's too good for it in a manner of speaking. And so the date basically went from bad to worse, quick, fast, and in a hurry, all right? And so J-Rock decided he came across this video where they actually had an interview between the two and talked and tried to figure out exactly what really happened. What's the backdrop? How did this whole thing come about? So we're going to react to this. J-Rock is going to chime in and give his 10 cents on what he believes uh, is happening here. You chime in in the comments as well. Make sure you lay it, smack it down on that subscribe button. Give that like button the people's elbow. Give that share button the rock bottom, all right? Um, that thanks button for me as well, all right? We ain't going to waste no more time, baby. Showtime. Rise and shine, beautiful souls. Welcome back to the Truth Factory. This episode is going to be a little bit different. Typically, we talk about uh, devastating issues and type of in, inside of relationships and try to talk about the nuanced things in that relationship to heal it. This time, we're going to talk about dating. So, I don't know if you guys have saw the viral video, but there's a viral video where a woman is taken to a, the Cheesecake Factory and she does not want to go inside of there. She does not want to be embarrassed. This conversation ended up going viral, and here we are. Um, Alicia, it is a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Jay, pleasure to meet you. Welcome to the show, and thank you guys for being willing to come here and have this dialogue. Uh, I'm sure you guys have caught, gotten a lot of flack, mm -hmm. um, maybe even some backlash and things of that nature from this video going viral. Well, um, yeah, be before we get into it, we're gonna take a moment and just relook at that video. It's mm -hmm. been a couple of weeks, so um, here we go right here. All right, so I ain't, I'm not gonna play the whole video. I'm sure many of you have watched it already. I'm gonna skip to the interview part. If you want to see it, um, you can Google it. You know, YouTube it. It's all over the internet, so it's not hard to miss. So now here we are, a few weeks later. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you've had some time to think about what you guys discussed in the car. I'm sure you've had some time to think about it. Uh, yeah. Before I ask you any questions, have you guys had a second date? Mm, no. no. No, no second dates? Yeah. Okay, okay. Uh, so I'll start with you, Jay. Mm. What, what... Uh, beg pardon? She said not yet? Not yet? Implying that there's a yet or a possibility? Dating been like for you since that video went viral? Uh, well, uh, since... I was on the video, kind of unexpected. Uh, I might not have put my best foot forward, you know. And huh? You ain't so do that wrong. I feel like, well, I, I, I've not really met anyone since mm -hmm. who uh, I've really gotten to get to know like that because it's just been a couple of weeks, bro. A lot of women they they might have seen the video or might have heard from it or maybe a friend of them is. I've seen the video and shares it with them, mm -hmm. and so they kind of had this image of me from, based on the video. Absolutely. And it hasn't really helped. Okay. Do that. It's like. Okay. Well, J Rock says this. For those of you who've seen the video, tell me what he did wrong. What did he do wrong? Only thing I think he did wrong was ask her out. Now I want to be clear and abundantly clear. If this is real. 
Okay, because I, I, I don't have any reason to believe that this is a skit or they're just trying to get views or they're, you know, uh, conspiring behind the scenes. If this is real, he didn't do anything wrong. Now, he could have did some things better, all right? One, I'm not waiting for you no hour. That's number one. If you've seen the video, he waited downstairs for her for an hour. No. You get 15 minutes. If I told you what time I'm going to be there, and you know that's what time I'm going to be there, unless it's some sort of catastrophic emergency, all right? But, and you knew, and we discussed the time that you were best available for me to pick you up, and I tell you to be there, or meet me there, or I will uh, pick you up, whatever the case may be, you got 15 minutes. If I say I'm going to be there at 5, 5 15, you ain't done. All right, I'm out. All right. So he waited an hour. Bro, man, he's nicer than me. But other than that, I don't know what more he could have done. They, they might think everything about me is reflected in that video, and I don't think it, it is. And uh, Them the kind of women yeah, you want to uh, stay away from you, bro. Difficult. That did you a favor. Well, and it's even before this, you know, dating has already been difficult for me. You know? I imagine your views kind of clash with what you're looking for and what they're looking for. Yeah, I think so, because, uh, I mean... He's a very soft-spoken guy. In general, my values kind of reflect wanting to build something that lasts. Yes, sir. And, and I want to make sure that anyone that I meet is willing to build a really strong foundation uh, yeah. based on our mutual values. Word. And mm -hmm. I think it... it in general, a lot of the people that I meet, uh, either they don't have time to set, set towards building something okay, like that, well, or bye. they just don't later. want to because, you know, they're younger, they want to experience, you know, ca casual dating or whatever it is. And, and it's just not something that I'm looking for right now. Understood, understood. So, obviously, guys, Jay's saying that they have a negative, they're viewing him in a negative light when it comes to dating. When I saw Jay, I saw someone who was making some excellent points, who knew what he want, and he's actually now like a Giga Chad in the uh, Manosphere world, in the Red Pill community. The brother's being mentioned everywhere for the way he handled that conversation. Um, now I'm going to ask Alicia as well, because during, during this conversation, Alicia. Alicia. Thank you. I'll get that right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Alicia, mm -hmm. you didn't seem to really disagree with what he was saying. Now you had a... Uh, definitely a different opinion before he yeah, gave let's his, see let's see how she defends right? that. but you right. seem very receptive to it can you explain to me kind of what you were thinking and how you saw him in that video because he's saying they got they took him in a negative light what, what do you think well yes i i think once we had the conversation i could see my role mm -hmm. in the conflict okay <laughs> okay Oh, cool. Um, let's back up a little bit. To be fair, I mean, now I was always know. raised that the man is supposed to cater to you. I mean, you're courting me, so court me. Mm -hmm. That means wherever I want to go, you take me. Absolutely. Whatever I want, you buy me. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I got to stop you right there. Who the hell told you that, honey? Who, who, who told you that, sweetie, that, that, that the man is supposed to do all this for you? Who, who told you that? Because I can look at this lady, Alicia, judging by the, you know, the, the, the amount of makeup she's wearing, he looks, they, he's probably in their late 20, early 30s. I think that's a good age range. So that much means if she's you know, raised in the traditional sense, then that would mean that her parents grew up maybe back in the 40s and maybe the 50s and 60s, somewhere around that time. This whole idea, and this is not a matter of right and wrong. It, it, it's just a matter of what works, right? You got to adjust with what's happening right now. This whole mindset that the man is supposed to do all of this, pay for everything, do all of that. A lot of that notion came from that time frame 
when men were the the main the the ones who worked and the women stayed at home. So the man had to pay for everything because he was the only one bringing in an income. The woman prim primarily, for the most part, stayed at home, took care of the house, made the dinner, you know, made sure the clothes were done, took care of the baby, whatever the case may be. Wasn't a lot of child care back then, you know, except school, of course, but it was more so children stayed home with mom. She took care of everything. The man went out, worked. He paid all the bills because the job, you know, the job scene uh, was a lot different then. Labor laws were different. The whole work environment was nowhere near like it is now. So that's why the man worked. He paid all the bills because the woman stayed at home and did everything else. So this whole, you know, the man is supposed to pay for everything, that came from a long time ago. We're in the 2000s now, 2023 to be exact, okay? Women work now. They have their own jobs, have their own cars, their own homes, all right? And it has nothing to do with the fact that the man is not able to do it. It was the fact that, you know, as time went by, women wanted to be more empowered. They wanted to, you know, they wanted to work. They wanted to earn an income and feel like, you know, they can do what the man does, et cetera, et cetera. And so it wasn't the fact that the man wasn't handling his business. It was the fact that women weren't content where they were. So they wanted more. So they insisted on being able to go to work. All right. Well, where do the children go while well, she's at work? Well, the children got to go to daycare or they go to school or whatever the case may be. All right. So now both parents are working. And so um, now she wants to be able to have some say over this, that, and the third. You know, all these, you know, feminists and magazines and on TikTok shows and all this other stuff. Women start to buy into that. And so, okay, fine. That's what you want. No problem. Understand this, though. This is how it's going to impact the, 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 the family, the kids, the whole, the whole home environment, all right? Impacting that environment, all right? If you want to work, work. That's fine. Just understand the consequences of doing it that way. And so that's why the man paid for everything because the woman, most women at that time, they didn't go, uh, they didn't live with other men unless they were married. Like in that time, there was a time where, especially in the black community, you know, after desegregation, uh, and you saw these old shows like I Love Lucy, men and women literally slept in different beds. Like that's that's how it was, right? And so it wasn't a, a matter of men weren't handling their business. It was a matter of women wanted to, you know, be I'm every woman now. And so this mindset of the man is supposed to pay for everything, that's a that's an, a predated type of mindset, all right? Now, if you want a man to pay for everything, that's fine. You got to make sure that he understands up front what he's getting into, what the expectations are, all right? You're expecting him to do something and he never told you he would, and now you're mad. Well, you never said anything, right? Unspoken expectations is one of the biggest relationship killers, not just in uh, boyfriend, girlfriend, husband, or wife, but friendships. You People expect somebody to do something that, that person never agreed to do, all right? And so this whole mindset of it's all about me, like this entitled mindset that just because you're the woman, you're entitled to things. No, no, you're not, honey. Nobody owes you nothing. Nobody, okay? I tell, you know, I haven't dated in a while, but... I tell people straight up, for the first couple of dates, I don't expect me to buy you nothing. I don't know you. Don't know you at all. You could be just coming out for a free meal, as far as I know. So, got to let things, got to let time go by. You want to see my motives. Women have a 30-day rule, 90-day rule, because they want to make sure the man ain't just trying to get in where he fit in and bounce. Okay, well, I got rules, too. I'm not spending no money on you if I don't know you. I'm not taking you to no five-star restaurant and we just met. Like, I don't know you to do that. I got to earn some stuff from you. Fine. You got to earn some stuff from me, too. Goes both ways. Let's see what's, what else you're talking about. That's courting. That's okay. your definition of courting. I'm looking for a provider. So, but 
after the conversation, I could see how there was a lot of I. Okay. In, 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 in that exchange, yes. um, I, it was, uh, I was definitely very self-centered and I can appreciate if I do want someone to provide for me, I at least got to be a little bit nice. Absolutely. Okay. okay and great. giving. So, now I ask you this. <laughs> based, about that? based on your idea of dating before your conversation. You're not entitled to nothing, honey. How did you grow up? Who, who also thinks that way? I'm sure you have friends who think that way. I, I've heard it a lot. I okay. mean, everybody. I mean, that's that's what the man's he's supposed to be the provider. Absolutely. So, you know, and I'm a beautiful woman, so I'm expecting to be treated like royalty. I mean, come on. I, I, okay, here's here's what I'm here's what I'm not mentioning. How is you going to the cheesecake factory, treating you like some indentured servant? That that's what I don't understand. It, the cheesecake factory. So basically, by you refusing to go to the cheesecake factory, you're indirectly saying anybody who goes there, I'm better than you. I'm better than the people that work there. I'm better than the people that eat there. I'm better than you. That's what you're saying. I understand she's saying she sees her involvement in it, but the way she was raised, or the mentality that she has, or maybe she, maybe took some things out of context is like she said very self-centered i need to be treated like royalty okay you're not entitled to nothing you want somebody to treat you like a queen but then you treat them like a peasant sweetie this ain't england the united kingdom honey All right you don't get to just shove your uh expectations down somebody's throat Right? That's like me meeting a woman and saying, well, I want a woman that's going to cook, clean, stay home, and uh, let me do this. But she got a college degree. She got she making six figures. And now she's just supposed to quit her job. Like, that's not right. I don't have the right to impose that on you. No more than she does to impose that on him. And here's what she figured out. Here's what she forgot. If you watch the video, he had reservations to take her to a restaurant she actually wanted to go to. But she shot herself in the foot by being late. She on black folks time. Y'all know how we can be sometimes. And I, it ain't just to stink the black folks. Because I, I, I know some white folks. My kid's mom. She can be late. She white. Okay? So, let's keep moving. So that's but what the I was doing. How do we treat him? And right. that's where, the, that's right. where the, right. the disconnect was. Right. Uh, in the video, now of course I'm sure you think of it differently now. But in the video, you, you basically told him that you know, you're not going in there, you know your value. It would be embarrassing for you to go inside a Cheesecake Factory. Oh, a lot of people oh. like Cheesecake Factory. Oh. Now, so when I see that video, I'm thinking, okay, she must have some friends who probably would disagree with her going inside a Cheesecake Factory. Uh, your, yeah. your peer group. Uh, yeah. So I've peer never, pressure probably keeps I've you from- I would never live that, oh my God. If I, yeah, I would have never lived that down. Wow, I, just I mean, if they ate the Cheesecake Factory, they wouldn't let you live that down. No, I have an image to protect. I, I, <laughs> Nikita wow. does not do that. Uh, I mean, that was you know that that was my circle though. That's how sure. I mean. That's what. That's how we roll. Sure. I mean, to be quite blunt, that's how we roll. Um, hypergamy is a big, you know, is a big thing in in my circle. Mm -hmm. Is what I mean. Is what we've been taught. Why well, I mean, as a black woman, I don't go there. I mean, as a black woman, mm -mm, mm -mm. Um, the same about really black. It's about you having to settle um, we want to be treated well mm -hmm. we want that soft life so that's what i thought i was going after however what i understand is a part of having a soft life is being cooperative being soft not being combative You're right. right actually being soft right right being right. receptive right. being sweet absolutely being pleasant right because we do understand the value of, of resources but it can't be just something for a lifestyle. Resources, a man's resources is not just for a woman's experiences and traveling and the lifestyle they'll live when married is for providing for the family and the children. And that's why she, she should seek a man and you know respect his resources or uh, prioritize his resources, not just for what it can do for her, right? right? And so when you were in the beginning of it, you was just saying, I'm not doing, it, it seemed really selfish, it right? Was. Uh, and, and I appreciate it. And when I saw the video myself, <laughs> that's one of the things I covered is, wow, she's I've never I've never seen a woman that receptive to uh, being accountable. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and you were 
Uh, but Jay, however, didn't. She really wasn't, to be perfectly honest with you. She was not receptive at all. The moment when he, the only time she became receptive is when he told her no. I'm not calling this restaurant. We're not doing this. I'm taking your ass home. That's when she became receptive. When he put his foot down, and maybe he took a little longer than some of us would have, but he got there. He told her no. I'm not doing. I'm not calling him. I'm not making no more reservations for you. I'm taking you home. Period. That's when she became receptive. To me, that's not receptive. That's not receptive. To me, that's just you. It, it's it's one of those scenarios where someone are they sorry? because they're actually sorry or are they sorry they got caught this is someone who from the sound and how she's describing how she's talking she sounds like someone who got caught and now she's sorry had she not got caught she would have kept right on doing it i mean i can just imagine how she is off camera you know this sadity bougie stuck up snobbish attitude i'm a queen you know, and you're supposed to do what I say and give me what I want. Who the hell are you, lady? Who the, somebody didn't like Martin said. Somebody didn't told you wrong. This whole 1950s and 60s, 70s mindset, where the man went to work and had to pay for everything because the woman didn't. This ain't them, bro. You gotta, you gotta update your your type of thinking. The word says that it's the traditions. Of man that make the word of God of no effect. You got a traditional type thinking. You haven't adjusted. Not saying there's anything wrong with it. All right. If that's what you want, fine. But feeling like you're entitled to it, like you're supposed to have it. Somebody ought to do it for you. Yeah, it's gonna get your ass out on this on the on the on on the what's that color? The orange brown couch with the red. Wanted, he didn't want to go out on a date. He wanted to discontinue that date. And he wanted to take it on to the house. I don't blame um, him. Jay, hmm. is that your first time stopping a date uh, midway through and going on back home, or? Yeah, something like th that's. I'm sorry, at least yeah, that's the first time I've really like put my foot down to that kind of extent. Bra bravo, bro. But it, it, it's you not like to. an in, uh, an isolated incident, okay. you know. Like I I've gone on dates with several people now uh even before her where it's they, they had very specific things they were looking for in a boyfriend or whatever and uh even within my own circles right and that that's just not something that i'm looking for mm -hmm. because i was raised like, like we were talking about how she was raised whereas with me like my family like i we we've passed down the name for ages and we're a very close-knit strong family uh you passed down your 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 first name jay like yes your fathers and fathers yeah, fa how yeah. many generations probably um i mean i i couldn't really count it myself because wow. because I mean, the thing is, like, I'm from India. Okay. You know. And ah. Okay. I was thinking, where, like, like, he India was separated from Pakistan. Mm -hmm. He is. And not, a lot of my family were like on both from sides here. of so that. that. So that culture come back together, that she's talking about, uh, and, and we had to, is a huge culture shock to stay strong after the fact. Mm -hmm. At the time. Hang on. That culture is the women over there and the women over here. That's a huge culture shock. All right. Huge culture shock. He doesn't necessarily, and he's an extremely soft-spoken guy, all right? And I could tell because that type of culture, women tend to be uh, hardly combative at all, right? Very, very cooperative, right? Uh, very agreeable, whereas in America, you know, especially from, you know, this hood chick is what it, she looks like, all right? Extremely combative, argumentative, stand up for yourself. I'm every moment. You're going to do this. You're going to do that. And the moment he told her, I'm not doing nothing. I'm taking you home. Well, wait a minute now. Hang on. You, I understand why you upset. I get it. Like, mm -mm -mm, no, baby, date over. So I can see his Maybe culture. We, we didn't 
care as much about like, creating this legacy, but mm -hmm. ever since, it's like th that's been one of the strongest parts of our family is the importance in creating a legacy. And with that in ma mind, like I've grown up with the idea that I want a strong family mm -hmm. here now that I'm living in America. The only kind of relationships I seek are ones where that is the only value. That is the biggest value. That is the most important thing for the other person as well as for me. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's, that's actually powerful. So your family going through all that they did, it caused you guys to really idealize relationships, right? And Specifically, relationships that last. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so right. here you are uh, right. in America dating. Yeah. And mostly in our culture where you stated earlier you were a black woman. Of course, we have been through some things. Right. And our, in our culture here yeah. in the States and throughout the whole diaspora, I like using that word. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times our, our culture has been stripped and we haven't yet began to idealize relationships. You know, so we're more so going along with the flow. So here he is in America and he's meeting a woman who is in America and she sees dating the way Americans see dating. And so I can see the clash in that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he looking at, he, he's looking yeah. at you as if that's selfish. You're looking at him as if. You know, he's treating you beneath your worth. Right. You're, you're actually right. value. So here's what I want to do, guys. Mm -hmm. I want to go back a bit. Can y'all tell me how y'all met? Can you, I want you to tell me how you guys met? This so should be interesting. I, I was in Midtown, and I barely even have time mm -hmm. to go out with friends and all that. But it was a really close friend's birthday. So I went to get some drinks for the first time in ages. Mm -hmm. And I saw this beautiful woman who... It seemed like every other guy in the bar was uh, either intimidated by or too shy to talk to. And I thought... I guess. I mean... What the hell? Why not? Um, and she was, you know, minding her own business. And I asked her, you know, her name, Alicia. And I thought that's a beautiful name. And even despite how loud it was in the bar, we were still able to talk a little here and there. And uh, I got her number. And she mm -hmm. had to go. Mm -hmm. and so we kept talking after that for a little bit. And then like a week later, I asked her, you want to go out I mean, to this to this restaurant? Yeah. And I told her it would be a surprise. Ah. Uh -huh. Maybe that that might, might be a, a problem. Huh. Her, you know, might have raised the expectations a little bit. But. Okay. All right. So. You wanted it to be a surprise, but ended up not working out. She thought the surprise was a cheesecake factory. Huh. Let's keep watching. I don't know. I don't know. Let me keep watching. I guess the surprise ended up being cheesecake factory where <laughs> right. we, the original surprise was I want, to get, I want to get to that. You had you had something else planned for her, right? Yeah. And because of how the evening went, mm. the Cheesecake Factory happened, right? Yeah. Um, so. and can I just say before? Sure. I love the Cheesecake Factory, <laughs> and it's a place that I've gone to for, like, every birthday. Uh, yeah. it, it, so, like, it wasn't just, like, a random restaurant to me. It was also, like, a place that I've gone with my family throughout Same. my entire life, and I love it. Cheap get cut. So, so you didn't. So obviously, the the uh, because you guys were late, she wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. You weren't able to take her to the restaurant that you yeah. wanted to take her to. You figured I can't go wrong with the cheese hit cake factory. Yeah, right? yeah. It's my old birthday restaurant. You know, it's my lucky. She'll love I, it. And that's the lucky <laughs> spot too. At the family. Lucky spot. Okay, yeah. we'll come back to that. Oh, no, I'm, I'm kidding with you. Uh, okay, <laughs> Alicia. Yeah. So Jay, you see Jay walking up to you in in the bar, say Midtown. Mm -hmm. He's walking up to you. He's gonna talk with you. There are other guys around you. Could you? Did you notice those guys probably want to talk to you? Did you? Yes, I did. So, so what made you say, okay, I'm gonna give this guy a chance? What was it about him? Well, he was bold enough to come up and talk to me for confidence, one. Confidence, okay. Um, so yes, I definitely am attracted to confidence. Mm -hmm. He just seemed like he had a pure heart. He mm -hmm. was, you know, very thoughtful, engaging. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, the the only, the only, he won me over. He did win me over, but okay. I'm a tall woman. Mm -hmm. And so 
Ah, okay. There wasn't necessarily like that immediate attraction. Because he was mm-hmm. shorter than you. But as we began to talk, it was his. It was really his heart that that made me say, I'll "Give this this guy a try." Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Is that where you draw your line? Is that typically you don't date guys who are? Uh, guys have to be at least your height or taller before you would date them. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand that. Um, that that probably makes it difficult um, finding someone suitable for yourself. Well, then um, just tell him no, you know? You like, are, what, six, one, six? I'm almost six, one, yeah. Almost six, one. Wow. Just say no. So that means... You're, you're a nice dude, but see. I want somebody that's taller. Fourteen and a half percent of men are, are six, at least six feet, right? But that next two inches, for you to find someone taller than you, that's 3.6% of she men in the entire NBA world player. That, that are tall enough... <laughs> That are six, they're at least six foot two. That, is that discouraging? I mean, I only need one. I only need to. You need one. one, but he needs to be that height. He needs to make the resources right. Yeah. He needs to be funny. He needs to be charismatic. He needs to be disciplined, and that doesn't yeah. discourage you. <laughs> like, I'm an optimist, but no. Then I like. Yeah, I like but it. no, I mean, an optimist. The, 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 <laughs> logically speaking, I understand what you're saying. Mm. I'm, I've heard this many times, <laughs> mm. but I'm, I haven't given up on, um, in the, you know, I hadn't given up on that, but I'm actually open, you know, I, I really enjoyed our conversation, so I would consider. Well, sure, and I, I, I was going to commend you for that. I didn't, I didn't see it as a, I know you're saying that they have to be that height, but it seems that you are willing to, you know, make an exception, just like you did for Jay here when he walked up and he had the confidence of a six foot two man, you mm. know, to at least hear what he had to say, and that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Because you may mm-hmm. not, you, it may mm-hmm. not be the the cookie cutter thing that you yeah. plan out. So, if we're gonna look for a happy relationship, a harmonic one that mm-hmm. gives our children and our lineage uh, what they need for years and generations to come, right? We may have to make an exception or two, right? Yeah. Sometimes it's it's not what we want; it's what we need, and we have to yeah. be more open to what we need. That's absolutely true. I, I was gonna say. Um, when it comes to how we date, I think a lot of it is just the information that we have, right? So what I noticed from uh, yours and, and um, Alicia's conversation, Jay, is that you had a different view of altogether of what dating should look like leading up to a relationship, and she had a different view. Yeah, and, and now, mm-hmm. like, what I should should say is, I mean, at the very end of the day, like, I understand dating in America is different from where my family's from, and. In, in a way, like, it's perfectly fine mm-hmm. it, to, to have those views and to think of date, dating differently. I, I just think, for me, I, had a, I have very specific criteria. And it's not a long list of criteria, but it's just certain values that I... Sure. Well, I think care. a lot like you. That's why the yeah. video stood out to me. I believe relationships should be harmonic. They should be for a reason. So I mm-hmm. believe in dating with intent, right? right? Mm-hmm. Well, many people in our generation today, they see dating as something that's just fun. They don't yeah. see it as a way to establish a healthy relationship. And that's what I was gonna say. There's almost little to no understanding as to what dating should look like when you're trying to establish an intent for a meaningful relationship. And I think that's the biggest problem. It's not so much that people are necessarily selfish or uh, entitled. It's more so that they don't know what they're looking for, right? Yeah, yeah that's what I was gonna say. Oftentimes we think we know, but mm-hmm. we, we really don't. Right, yeah. right. So when he when he asked you the question, you so you expect men to go all out on a date, huh? Mm-hmm. To, and and he you said absolutely. If he likes her, he should present that, right? Yes. He should lead yes. lead and be masculine. He should be willing to pay for the meal, show up on time, open doors for her, the whole nine. He did when that. He asked you, what does a woman expect you to do? You said, look good, yeah. be there, and that's where the. And I can't. St- oh, that gets on. So let me, let J Rock understand this. You think all you got to do is just look good. See, that's what's wrong with this 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 society now. America as a whole, we have reduced the value of a woman down to her looks. What your worth is based on how you look? Are you kidding me? No concept of what beauty truly is. Beauty isn't just about how you look. Beauty is about who and how you are as a woman. Sure, looks can get my attention, but it's your beauty that's going to keep my attention. 
All right. I can't tell you how many fine, gorgeous, beautiful women that they look a certain way. But the moment they open their mouth, the attraction is gone. You meet a beautiful woman, but she got a stank attitude. And you're like, you know what? Just go over. The, you know what? You know, you stay right here. I'm going to leave. Okay? Like, oh, my God. You think that? And you hear all these, 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 these people on these talk show hosts, Steve Harvey, act like, a, act like a lady, think like a man. That has screwed a lot of women's heads up into thinking that you are entitled to something when you are not. That man owes you nothing. Yes, he's trying to get to know you, but most women view dating as an experience. I swear, some women think that they meet you and they are, the, the, how they act, they think that a dude is supposed to say, you know what, I know I just met you and everything, you know, we just really getting to know one another, but you know what, here go the money for your rent. And you know what, I'm going to take you shopping real quick. Like, what the hell, I just, lady, I don't even know your last name. But you expecting me to do all of this. Take me out. Five star rex. Impress me. See, for most women, it's all about the experience, not the person. That's what the society has really screwed up people's concept of love and dating. They're trying to skip steps. Be the provider first. Not, let, not who are you as a man. They care more about his cash than his character. His money more than his morals. And then they think that because, oh, I look good, that's it. Honey, I don't care how fine you are. A man going to get tired of looking at you if he got to put up with your crap. I had a, a, a dude I used to work with named Bill. One of the realest things he's ever said. He, said. he said, I don't care how fine a woman is. There's always a dude somewhere who is sick and tired of putting up with her crap in exchange for sex. He's sick and tired of putting up with it. And then, but then you have the women who are, there are women out there who are smart, who are beautiful, inside and out. These are the women who get the high value man, more on that in a second, and actually build something with him. And so, but much like this woman, bless her heart, she shot herself in the foot because everything she wanted from a man, he was finna give to her. He was finna pick her up. He was finna open. He was opening the door. He was a gentleman. He was gonna take her to a nice restaurant. He was gonna pay for it. everything she wanted. She had it right there, and she messed it up because she felt entitled to it. Let that be a lesson. Right. Disconnect. Was Absolutely, because there there should be things that a woman should do. Right. So, if you've thought about that, could you could you tell me some of what you've what you think now, if he were to ask you that question today? Sure. If you think about, if you know, watching the video, it's like, how do you expect this person to keep giving, 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 and you're not giving anything back? Mm. So now we're depleted. Absolutely. And so who's going to pour into him? Wow. So, I mean, if you, if you truly do want that type of uh, protection provider, there has to be some balance. Absolutely. So... Wow, yeah. that is, that's very powerful. Mm -hmm. I actually took the liberty to make a list of things that men and women should look for in each other on a date, right? I'm gonna read them to you. I want you guys to tell me what you think of in the end, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's start with looking for what you're looking for in a man, okay? So when a woman looks for in a man, respect and courtesy, would you say I'm wrong? Right, right. Confidence, okay. right? Mm -hmm. um, communication skills. Of course. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You Knowing what he wants, where he's going with it, right? Yes. Uh, initiative, taking the initiative. Mm -hmm. uh, chivalry. Yes. Okay. Resilience. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So even when you're being a little bit, you know, hard to get, he can push past that, right? The resilience. I don't do the uh, hard to get crap. I don't do that. Yes. Okay. So don't, here are the behaviors that look um, don't play that. good to a man when he's looking for a woman. I'm going to ask you the same questions you mm -hmm. can if you like the sound of that. Um, men are looking for kindness. Right. You want her to be really kind, really sweet, right? Uh, pleasant. Uh, so what about active listening? Yeah. yeah. And you said when she got in the car, she was putting the makeup on and mm. she wasn't really responding to you or responsive to you. Whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 hold up, back up a damn minute. Good Lord, hang on one second. What? You had me waiting downstairs for an hour and your ass still ain't ready? I mean, damn. Look, I get it, ladies. 
it take you a minute to get yourself together. You want everything to be right. Every hair has to be going in the same direction. No hair can be, if one little hair is not right, you got to, you know, I just need to crimp it and do a, okay, fine. You want to look good for you, man. Nothing wrong with that. All right. And she's rushed, but damn. You've been having me waiting for an hour and you still ain't ready? Come on, man. Like that, it, it just get to the point where that's just disrespectful. All right? I get a woman wants to look good, but I mean, damn. That's just, no, how you doing? No, I'm doing, you know, like, good God. And you get in the car, still putting makeup, like, seriously? After you had me waiting for an hour, did you apologize? I'm so sorry. That's what I'm talking about, this whole entitlement thing. Everything she wanted was right there. Only thing she had to sacrifice was a few inches in height. That's it. Everything else, Brum Man was willing to give to her. And she fumbled it. Man. I don't like you much. Yeah. Right. Uh, uh, encouragement. Yeah. And, yes, and you said that being able to pull back into him, right? Mm -hmm. um, How's she gonna pull back into him mm -hmm. when she ain't got right? nothing so not to dance? Being negative, having a smile on your face, right? Um, respect for independence. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, adaptability. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was this time where you wanted her to hold your arm, yeah. right, and walk you to the where, so you could walk. That's their the tradition. Want to do that. That's where he's from. To her that you didn't like that, and it made you feel like. Uh, of course, when her not being on your arm, how can you truly protect her, mm. right? But also, her not doing that says she ain't really, she ain't really feeling me like that. Yeah, she don't really like me like that's, that. That's that's body yeah. language. You know, I get. Yeah, you know, it was a first date. Maybe she's not at that stage yet. Whoa, like whoa, whoa, yeah. Yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa! Time out, because she said that during the date. I'm not gonna invite you up to my place because this is our first date. I don't really know you. Okay, fine. I'm not gonna hold your arm because I don't know you. But at the same time, you want me to take you to a five-star restaurant and pay for it. You see the entitlement there? That's one of the biggest reasons relationships don't work. Because you have someone doing all the taking. And the other person is doing all the giving. And then when they're depleted, they're not willing to give anything because they believe they're entitled to stuff. And so they'll dump you and move on to somebody else. They're just takers, man. Oh, this annoys me. Keep going. Question. Let's just say you're out with him, right? You're on a date with a guy, and some guy comes up, takes your purse. Do you want your date to have your back? Yeah. So He has to protect me. And mm -hmm. Even if he's not ready for that yet, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. He shouldn't mm -hmm. even ask you on a date if he's not going to protect you. Or something. All these expectations for the man, and all home. you got to do is look good. Really? You see, so it may feel like I'm giving this guy too much of me, but it's more like I'm being cooperative to the roles that we're playing. He's going to protect me if something happens right now, and so I'm going to stand close to him. This lets the people on the outside looking in know that I'm with this man. Mm -hmm. He's taking care of me. We're out together, right? It, so it, It's like it kind of shows that you trust. Absolutely. I think. I, I felt like... like we like, trust as a baby. What, what women a, get out of a date yeah. is a free bodyguard. Because Basically, if anything goes wrong with her, he is he has to really put his life on the line for her. Basically, so if a man asks you out on a date, you shouldn't say I'm not ready to hold your hand. I know that seems like a, a move forward in a relationship, so to speak, but it's actually just part of a date. Mm -hmm. um, your, your 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 goal is to give him um, an example of what it would look like if you were his partner, and his goal is to do the same. So uh, to a, to a man, you not doing those things makes it appear that you're not that interested. Definitely not ready to be a partner, I guess. It also kills his ability to be completely masculine for you on that date because if you won't take his arm, then, you know. Yeah. I, I feel like when you just said, like, trust is a big word, it is a big word. But maybe uh, the way I saw it is when you went, wanted to go out with me at all, that was you trusting me. Okay. And it, it did kind of hurt a little bit. I mean, again, I can respect boundaries. But it did still at the same time hurt my feelings if you didn't trust me. And of course, as men, we're going to try to be receptive to that and understand where you're coming from. Um, but it does kind of limit his ability to do his full, uh, to be his full masculine self in, in that capacity, right? Yeah. Um, the last thing I had here was intellectual stimulation. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So we, we like when a woman can respond back and be attentive. Right. Yeah. And have a good conversation. Right. We look for that in women. Um, and I think I definitely think she appeared to have that. You guys started off on the it was a little difficult conversation, but it seems like she understood you. She was yeah. receptive to what you were saying. Is that typical for you? Well, typically, a lot of the girls that I met, as I said, like they're literally on it, only trying to date to date or to like have. Uh, I don't know. I'm a lot to use the word fuck buddy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. We're in hookup culture. That's We're in a hookup culture. True. Exactly. And so, like, they're, they're just true. looking for that. And so it's like sometimes it's not necessarily Real about benefits. the values or anything like that. Maybe it's like more small talk maybe and maybe sometimes it feels like uh it's something that'll take more time to get her to open up or something like that where at the end of the day they don't want a second date because we haven't gotten to know each other and that to me sounds so irritating because you didn't want to get to know it we didn't get to know each other because they wouldn't want to talk. Absolutely. So it's like, I completely, I completely understand. So as a man dating with intent, you're ending up in these situations where, a lot of times you're in hookup culture, mm-hmm. and so you're not getting a second date out of it. Meanwhile, yeah. here you are. You have spent your money. You 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 spent time with this person mm-hmm. who you're never gonna likely see again. Yeah. Right. Um, uh huh. So we're often spend money looking on. at dates as what they can get out of them, right? An experience, right? Take me to a nice restaurant. I want the ambiance. I want the treatment, right? And with no intent of doing anything special for the guy after the date, so it's almost like a free meal. She, uh, she, it's almost like she's getting over on him, right? Like I wasn't gonna say it. Meals, and that's what men say. I'm not gonna keep taking these women out. I'm not gonna. He said, I ain't like gonna say it. Don't go out if you don't like me, because then it wouldn't end up where he's on the outside looking into the thing. And what do women say oftentimes when he's upset? I took you to this restaurant. I did that. And now you don't want to get close to me. You're not ready. And she's like, well, you wanted to do it. Mm. <laughs> she will let him spin, spin, and spin. Sure will. Knowing she's not interested in this man. Now, mm-hmm. Do you feel like that's wrong? No. I, of course I don't like not. users. So, mm-hmm. I mean, uh, I do think that that's, I think that we are all adults. And there's enough of every type out here to where that's not even necessary. Like, there are men that really will just spend money on you. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's there's a certain type. There's yeah. stuff that go with that, but there are, you know, men that will just spend money on you and are okay with that. Trust mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. They want something back. But, they ain't what, just spending for t- nothing. What do you take from that type of man, if you don't mind me asking? We call that a simp. Mm-hmm. And, I, and we call that a simp when a man is willing to buy you anything, take you anywhere, and you haven't actually earned that from him with your affection or just being there for him in general. Um, how, how do you see that? If women are being really honest. I don't think most women actually respect a man that is like that. And I, I think there's two different types. There's the ones that will spend money on and they're objectifying the woman and she's just like a toy for them. Right. Mm-hmm. And then there's the ones that really are trying, trying to buy his way in, yeah. just trying his best to earn any type of affection from her. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot of those I men. There's a lot of those women who allow that to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So that's why I take what Jay doing here as being something that is great for men everywhere, okay? He knew his worth. You are a beautiful woman. But he said, you know what? I'm just going to take her home. I don't I don't have to do this. No. E- even to the point when you said, I will go eat with you at Cheesecake Factory. He saw it as, you know, I would I would have set aside the, the date, right? Us being late to that uh, reservation. You're not holding my hand. You're not talking to me in the car. But it seems that all he, these red flags. The camera really, really got to him. Do you mind telling me what you probably take took by that? You you just on a date and all of a sudden now she's recording you. A lot of times, yeah. If I'm the one asking a girl out, mm-hmm. uh, that's me already offering to pay for the meal, right? That's me already me being too. okay with that, right? right? Mm-hmm. But her recording me did feel like that's where I felt like she was trying to take advantage. She disrespected. She was trying to like. And maybe you had a different view on it, but it felt like at the time that disrespect you were just trying to disrespect get you food like a free meal basically from a fancy restaurant, and then you get content from me too. Yeah, to post on mm-hmm. YouTube, Facebook, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. you get your reputation 
ran through the mud. So it, yeah. it's all be done at your she expense, fumbled. right? Mm -hmm. At the one no, yard line. That wasn't your that wasn't your take. You have many groups where you encourage women on dating. Y'all talk about dating, right. and this was something that you said. Look, you y'all see a lot of dates go wrong. Right. So based on your mindset. You really felt like he was you, taking you somewhere beneath your value. Yeah. And you were saying, I'm gonna show I'm gonna show the world how you're treating me, right? Can you tell us a bit about that so he knows that, you know, it wasn't to embarrass you, it wasn't to, you know, get content, right. um, any of that. It was I felt I felt wronged in that scenario. You mind? No, I did. I felt like you didn't see my value. Hmm. And um, you know, in that moment, I, I felt like I needed the support of my, my viewers um, in that moment. Mm -hmm. But, and not only that, like he said, you know, I do, I discuss relationships and things like that. So I thought that that was a good opportunity for me to kind of have that conversation and see, like, what does, you know, what does everybody else think? Why does it matter? I wasn't really taking your feelings into consideration. I wasn't yeah. trying to be necessarily malicious or anything like that. I understand. Good, good. I'm, th th this is Clax. Um, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna let them finish because this is right the end. Guys, to end this, to end this video, okay? In a world uh, with hookup culture, uh, not having much understanding on relationships based on how we're raised, and then you got social media with the instant gratification and making it so easy to meet people and replace people. Um, Dayton has gotten. It's like a thing that's lost to us. I want to ask um, these two beautiful people here a question. They had one date that went bad. They have not went on a date since that day, right? Now, would you guys be open to another date? Knowing what you know now. I think if, if we were able to find a way to get our values more in the center, um, I could see us trying again. I mean, yeah, I would be willing to go out on a date again. Wow. That, that's awesome. That's awesome. Listen, we want to keep up with this first date. Actually, we're going to take care of this first date. It's going to be on us. So we're going to send you somewhere just like they used to do on all those other talk shows. Mm -hmm. uh, we're <laughs> we're going to take care of it. And then we'll reach back to you guys in a couple of weeks and find out how that's going. How does that sound? That's I love to see what you guys are up to. Right. As long as it's not the cheesecake now. Oh. <laughs> she is funny, man. Yeah, yeah. I'd have took yeah. her right back to the cheesecake yeah. factory. Uh, he, 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 hell. We're going to see how high and he it is when you sitting right back in the damn cheesecake factory. Look, J-Rock says this. Yeah, well, yeah J-Rock says this. This is content over everything. C-O-E, content over everything. The, it, look, here's one thing I've learned in life. Whoever you seek first in your time of trouble determines who you trust the most. This lady trusted the opinions of others more than she was trying to sit here and have a connection with this dude. Don't sit here and tell me you may not have been trying to be malicious, but the message was obvious. 80% of all communication is nonverbal. The fact that you were looking at the camera the majority of the video, not looking at me, not making eye contact with me, just basically I'm, I'm, I'm a part of your entertainment. This is entertainment entertainment to you. This is about an experience to you. You're not trying to get to know me. You don't really care about me. You care about what I can do for you, how I can make you look, how I can make you feel. And that's one of the reasons relationships don't work because people get into them for selfish, self-centered reasons. They have nothing to build on, okay? Nothing to build on, nothing substantial to build on. And then they're trying to go out here and they're jumping from dude to dude, from woman to woman, and wonder why it ain't work. What's wrong with the dating? The, what's wrong with the dating is that we as a society don't understand that without love, relationships don't work. They're not effective. You're not experiencing them to the fullest. For most people, dating is an experience. Women, they want the, the experience of being you know, uh, catered to and showered and with all these other things. And for men, it's all about sex, right? That's their experience, how she made me feel. So it's not about the person, it's about what the person can do for you. And if they can't do or make me feel a certain way, then that person is of no value to me. This is what I like to call the golden calf worshiper. Many of you know the story of the book of Exodus. God is leading the children of Israel out of Egypt into the promised land. A journey that would have taken them two weeks took them 40 years. 
And during this journey, Moses had to go up, go up on Mount Sinai to receive the Ten Commandments with God. He was up there 40 days. At the base of the mountain, the children of Israel were begin to complain and murmur and whine to Moses' brother Aaron. And they said, where's this Moses? He just brought us out here to die, to leave us to die? Now these were the same people who saw the miracles of God firsthand. They saw the parting of the Red Sea. They saw the pillar of cloud by day. They saw the uh, pillar of fire by night. They saw all of this. But yet when they ran into some hardship, they immediately said, Aaron, build us a God. Because Moses has left us and so has God. So build us a God so we can worship him. He came up with the bright idea. Give me your jewelry. And so he fashioned this golden calf out of their gold according to what the word says, and they begin to worship this golden cow. This is the God that saved us. This is the God that brought us out of Israel, this golden cow. What does that have to do with society as a whole, dating as a whole? Because you have women who will say that the, a high value man is somebody that has a lot of money. Nothing about his values, nothing about what's important to him, nothing about what truly matters to him. It's all about his money. So those women are what I like to call golden calf worshipers. You are worshiping things made from the hands of man. A man made that and so you're worshiping it. You're worshiping, worshiping the house. You're worshiping the car. You're worshiping the shopping sprees. You're worshiping all of the trips and the vacations and the chartered flights and the jets and the motels and the hotels or whatever, you're worshiping all these things, the jewelry, the rims, the car, you're worshiping things that were made by the hands of man. That's who you are. That's what you're worshiping. So we do it all the time. And what I mean by worship, I mean, uh, you need this in order to feel like you're something. I need a man who makes six figures in order for me to feel like, what would it mean if you had a man that didn't make six figures? He, he, he loved you, he was loyal, he was faithful, he took care of you, he provided for you. Everything that a man does, he just don't make six figures. See, to some women, that's a low value man. They don't have time for that. They'll take the dude that makes six, seven figures, but treat them like trash. And what they fail to realize is that it's only a matter of time before you all of that money and stuff don't mean nothing. It don't mean a thing. You've heard it said before, uh, money can buy you a house, but it can't make it a home. Money can buy you a bed, but it can't buy you rest. And you're sitting up here demanding that, but that's that's society, man. That's what society is as a whole. You got to have the you got to have the things society says are important. It lacks no substance. Great taste, less than it it leaves you empty when it's all said and done. Look good on the outside though. You perpetrating a fraud or you pump faking you're not really shooting you pump faking and this dude was willing to give her everything she wanted take her to a nice restaurant treat her with respect he was willing to let go of the fact you were over an hour late he was willing to let go of the fact that you uh, um, uh, didn't talk to him didn't pay him hardly any attention was more focused on your makeup than you were about him weren't talking to him wasn't giving him the respect. And, and look, if you don't like the dude, then maybe she just wasn't feeling him like that. Okay, then, then don't say yes. Don't say yes. If you if your if your frame of mind is, let me give this person a try. That is another way of saying I don't really like you like that. But okay, don't even go. Even if even if what you want ain't really all that good, just save them the trouble of having to deal with your trifling behind. Because you're not gonna be happy, you're not gonna be satisfied, and all you're doing is wasting this person's time. And her being late was a was a good thing because it saved him the time of having to deal with her. And the fact that he's like, yeah, I'll go on a second date, man, hell no, I wanna go on a date with her. She's made it abundantly clear what matters most to her. And that's fine, that's what you want, go look for it. I'm good. I'm not finna sit here and just keep going back and forth with you like that. The man is supposed to cater to you. I don't know you, honey. It ain't the man's job. I don't like using that word job. Job connotes me got him to do something I don't want to do in order to get something I want. It's not his job to take care of you. It's his pleasure to take care of you once you become the type of woman he wants to take care of. But you're not doing that on the first, second, third date. That takes time. 
Don't expect no big payout on the first day. I don't know you, honey. So, that, that is what it is. That's my 10 cents to this whole situation. Y'all let me know your thoughts. Post it down in the comment section below. Let J-Rock know what you thought of his reaction to this video. No rhyme intended on that line. If you enjoyed the Great One's reaction, hit that like button, subscribe, share. Make sure that you hit that bell so you can be notified when it is time to be electrified. Thank you for joining J-Rock. Stay tuned for the next video. Mamba, GG, and Wakanda forever. Hear me smile! What J-Rock? Jesus.